Hi, we're Spectre, and in this video we're going to be talking you through our latest single, Endless Days. Yeah, so Endless Days, um, it actually um, started um, during lockdown. Um, we were kind of um, having to spend a lot of our time separately, isolated, um, and you know the only kind of studio sessions that we could do were via Zoom, um, and we were just basically kind of trying to make something a bit different really and think outside the box and you know we've, we've made a lot of club records um, up until that point and during lockdown we kind of like we're just thinking you know it was kind of coming up to summer we were thinking of like trying to sort of channel some of that like energy that we were thinking of you know to, to make something a bit different a bit outside the box but without the usual constraint of it having to be a dance floor record exactly so yeah that was that became the early version of it, which actually had a different title because we had a different vocal in there, which is what what's playing in the background now. Um, yeah, and then we sat on that for nine months, something like that. Yeah, we sat on it for quite a while because we knew it wasn't right, didn't we? I think we'd made a, a, sort of two or three um, sort of um, non dance floor records yeah. that were, were a bit sort of breakbeaty, a bit kind of like, we, I think we were kind of thinking possibly, you know, a release Spotify only or mm -hmm. just something that was a bit more home listening, basically. Yeah. So we'd made sort of three different ones and we realised that that one wasn't quite right, you know, that that one wasn't yeah. quite hitting the mark. I think one of the others, you know, we were really happy I with. I think there was a few too many ideas in there, basically. But yeah. we, after sort of sitting on it for a few months, we realised that the actual main riff, which was kind of a synth and piano riff, originally we stripped it back to just being a piano in the end, was the killer part. That was the, that was the bit that we'd really nailed yep. in that early version. Um, so yeah, we, we took it back into the studio and then reworked it into what is now the club mix. Uh, event the States. Yeah, that was towards the end of lockdown when we actually managed to get back in together. And, and, and we had gigs coming back. So we, we were a bit, we were a bit like, right, inspired. okay, let's look through our ideas and try and find something that we could actually turn into a dance floor record. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah and that was some, that was one of our first things that we attacked as soon as we got out of lockdown, yeah, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, and it all just came together well. Yeah, so um, so yeah, I'm going to jump over onto the, uh, onto the hot seat now and uh, talk you through some of the more technical bits. So I'll see you there. Hi again guys, so yeah, I'm going to be talking you through how we made our new single Endless Days. Uh, but before I start, I'd just like to thank uh, Peter Watson who let us use the fantastic image uh, that we used for the artwork uh, for this single. Um, yeah, fantastic artist and really uh, appreciate him allowing us to use his work uh, for this. So yeah, let's get stuck in. So um, the track, um, as I think we said in the introduction, was originally, it, basically it was an idea that grew out of another idea. Um, and we yeah, took the piano riff from a little idea that we'd already worked on in lockdown uh, and developed it into a club track. And then we kind of went backwards again and, and did a breakbeat mix as well. But it's the club mix that I'm going to be talking you through today. Um, so, yeah, let's just go through it sort of from the top down, really. Uh, so if you have a look over here, um, I've got the drums grouped on a bus here. So I'll go through those one by one. Um, the kick drum is fairly straightforward. It's three layers, four layers in fact. Um, there's a sort of mid-range one, a sort of more knocky percussive one. There's also got the subby rumble on it. Then a really distorted one. And just a little transient. So those four layers together make up, uh, make up the kick. Um, there's also a little uh, separate channel for the kick here for the kick fills where there's a double. And the reason I've got that on a separate channel there is just because I think we had some compression or some saturation or something on the kick drum channel. Um, and having the doubles was actually making the compressor trigger in a bit of a weird way. So we, uh, yeah, we put the, the fills on a separate channel just to, to get around that. Um, then I'll go through the, the sort of top end percussion parts. Uh, there's an offbeat distorted kind of thing here, which is like a shaker. Uh, a fairly typical clap. Quite a bit crushed, quite lo-fi, but just gives it a nice bit of uh, bit of chunk. 
uh, and then a shaker and um, sort of sh an egg shaker and a tambourine, should I say, uh, from a plugin called Skaka or Skaka, I'm not sure the correct pronunciation, from Clavgrant, uh, which is a really good plugin for, for doing shakers and stuff. I bounced these down to audio and also did two takes of them for left and right so you get some nice stereo going on. So they give a bit of looseness to the drums. You know, they're not too, uh, yeah, they're not too tightly sequenced. They've got a little bit of very gentle swing. Um, so then moving on to the hi-hats, very simple open and closed 909 here. Just an open on the off beats and a closed here. You can see just a little bit of velocity program in there. So the one on the beat is a little bit quieter than the others. and then the open fills the gaps. And then there's just a ride sat on top of that. Just pretty standard 909 ride. It's a sample that we use quite often. Um, it's been high passed and it's had the little rings already notched out of it just to make it a bit easier to use. So that's all the kind of fundamental sort of foundational percussion taken care of and I've sort of deliberately skipped the interesting bit so that we can go to them next. Um, so there's this BT break here which is a break beat from an old BT sample pack. In fact it was a sample CD, it's that long ago since we bought it, I actually got this one on uh, as a physical copy. Um, and it was a break beat, if we have a look at it in the browser, um, it was in the sort of down tempo hip hop kind of section of the pack. And it's obviously a sample that's been slowed down for, for that purpose. So we sped it back up and, uh, and just gave it a little bit of processing. Not very much, really. So this is what it sounds like in the track. And the processing was pretty minimal, really. A little bit of delay on there from Echo Boy. You can see the mix is set all the way to dry at the moment. And if we open up the automation, I think we just mix that in later on. Yeah, you can see on the build up here, we just had a bit of delay and a bit of feedback on the delay. So that just gives it a bit of movement. So it's pretty dry all the way through because the sample itself had a decent amount of reverb on anyway. Um, and then just a high pass filter here, just to get the bottom end out of it, because obviously it's got to sit with our kick and bass and everything. Uh, and then there was a bit of a ring in the snare, which I just notched out slightly there. So that's the main uh, part of the breakbeat. Then there's also this channel down here called Bedrocky Snares, which was the snare taken from that same breakbeat sample at the pitch we used it at. Um, and then quite a little trick that we do quite often actually, which is using um, velocity to control the filter cutoff on a, uh, on a drum sample. So you can see the programming is all just C3, so it's just playing at its original pitch. But I've drawn in some different levels of, uh, of velocity for these notes, just expand it there so you can see better. Um, and then in simpler here, there's two copies actually, just uh, to give it a bit of thickness, using two slightly different snares from the same break, but the, the processing is the same on both. Um, so we've got a low pass filter on here uh, with the res cranked up quite high, quite a lot of drive on the on the MS20 filter model on here. Um, and then in the controls, we've got the velocity to filter set to 68%. So the velocity is affecting the filter, uh, the filter cutoff quite a lot. So you can hear with that, that um, just by play, playing the same note repeatedly with different velocities, you get quite a, uh, quite a complex sound. So if I just put those all to the same velocity just to, to illustrate. So all that movement is coming from the, uh, from the velocity programming. And then the pattern just does a slightly different variation afterwards. One extra hit and different program. Um, and it just reminded me of, I can't remember which one, but it reminded me a bit of one of the old um, early Bedrock remixes from like the late 90s, early 2000s. Um, so yeah, hence Bedrocky snares. Um, and then that is it for the drums really. There's not a lot else in there. I think there was a snare roll probably when it builds up. Um, 
which is just this here. Super simple, 16th notes. Um, it's, yeah, just a 909 snare sample with simple high-pass filter on it and a bit of reverb. Um, and yeah, just automated. Put, there's a few little 30-second um, note rolls in there and automated the volume and also the sustain as well. So the length of each snare gets a little bit longer and shorter as it builds up, just gives it a nice bit of dynamics. Um, and the only other thing that's up here around with the drums, even though it isn't really drums, uh, are these kind of little splash effects, which we made from the BT break, the, the breakbeat sample that we used earlier on. Uh, and it's just a load of reverb taken off the snare. So there's that one and this one, which is actually the same thing, just EQ'd a bit differently. So that one's a bit brighter and that one's got a bit of top taken off it. So they're really nice effects uh, to just give a bit of, uh, you know, crash cymbal type effect, but without using the most obvious uh, sounds, you know, like a white noise type thing. Um, it's something we quite often do actually is, is using... Um, a sound that's already in the track, whether that's a percussive sound or a, um, you know, synth sound or a vocal, whatever, um, and then just slinging a load of reverb on it and then using that as kind of a splash crash white noise effect. And it's just a good way of making the whole track sound a little bit more cohesive. Um, so, yeah, they're up with the drums, even though they aren't really drums. So moving on down, um, we've got the bass, which is really simple on this. Um, it's made of two parts. There's a rumble, which was just one of the kick drum layers. And I've just moved the sample start in a little bit um, so that we've not got the real click, the attack of the kick, uh, and then filtered it down quite a lot um, just with the standard filter in Simpler. Uh, and it's just played on the offbeat, I think, or it's got a bit of a groove to it, maybe. Let's have a little look. It's a while since I've looked at this project. Um, so, yeah, there's an offbeat on the first beat and then a double offbeat with the velocity of the first one down a little bit lower on the uh, on the second beat. So on its own, that sounds like this. And I'll just put that in with the kick just so you can kind of hear what that's doing. And then on top of that, there's this rave bass here, which is, I think it was a sample. Yeah, just kind of like a rave stab sample that we had just doing uh, the same groove basically. If I just turned the filter off here, you'll be able to hear what that sounded like originally. So it's kind of a chunky, you know, synthy, detuned, bass, ravey kind of thing. Um, so yeah, I'm not quite sure where I got that from. Looks like it was from a sample pack of some sort. Um, and what I did to just give that a bit of stereo width is um, duplicated it, panned one hard left and one hard right, and just changed the sample start slightly. You can see that. So it gives you a nice bit of um, stereo spread. And then there's a bit of thermal on there for distortion. Gives it a bit more mid-range, but like low mid presence. And then just filtered to stop it from taking up too much space in the mix. Because uh, although the sound itself is quite nice, all those high frequencies and stuff is where our synths and our piano and stuff are going to want to live later on. So we didn't want to take up too much space with that. So that's how the groove sounds. I'm going to skip down past the vocal for a moment and um, look at the piano next because uh, the, the order that we did things, it kind of makes sense to do it this way. Um, so the piano is here and like I said, that was originally a riff that we'd written for a different track, uh, which we've now then sort of developed and, uh, and worked into uh, Endless Days. So the pattern itself is pretty simple. Um, I just played the top chords first, just um, on Ableton Push and then added the little bottom notes in afterwards. I'm not a great keyboard player, so I use Ableton Push quite a lot. Um, and yeah, it's a nice way of, w of working those kind of things out. So this is what we've got. So yeah, I worked out these chords first, just played those in, and then added the little lower octave. So pretty much as a rule, these are just playing the same note as the bottom of the chord, but an octave down. Um, so yeah, simple as that really. Um, the sound itself is loaded up from two. There's this sample based one here. 
which is a bit more bright and jangly. And then there's a lower one from the Arturia piano. I think the sampled one's from one of the F9 packs, if I remember rightly. Uh, and then the bottom one is from the Arturia piano, which is a bit more real piano sounding, you know, rather than a dance piano. Uh, still quite bright, but the two layered together gives a good effect. And there was actually a little piano layer on top as well, which I think we ended up mixing so quietly it didn't really do much in the end, which was like a little reversey thing. Adds a little bit of texture to the top, so I mean, it's it's super subtle. Uh, and then that piano group, which is those two pianos plus a little top layer, goes through a group, uh, rolled the bottom end off, scooped some of the mids so that it wasn't too sort of honky, uh, brightened it up a little bit, and then delay, reverb, and a little bit of compression from the uh, Acme Opticon at the end, just to smooth things out a little bit. Um, so yeah, that's the piano. And underneath that is this Reese here, which was actually the same sound we used on our track Soul Movement, which was out a few years ago on Filth on Acid. Um, so yeah, we recycled that sound and it worked really nicely in the listen. It's basically just, you can say I actually loaded the MIDI for the piano in and kind of just muted the, uh, muted the notes that we weren't using. Um, and it's basically just playing the first notes, you know, the lower notes of the chord, but not exactly. I think I moved the octaves of some of them to make it fit better. And that sound is, it's a combination of two things. There's firstly a, uh, an old school drum and bass Reese sample. And then this layer off Hive, uh, which is just a pretty simple, um, I think it's just sort of a detuned saw type thing. Let's just solo those. Have a little listen. So yeah, a bit of a distorted super saw type thing. And then the old school Reese is the more smooth, jungly kind of one. So... Yeah, though those two just run through. That's not doing anything. A little bit of a low pass just to control it, and then I've got an EQ8 here with a um, a resonant peak sweeping up and down, controlled by a Max for Live LFO, which is a really good trick actually. You kind of get that phaser effect, but without all the cuts that a phaser incurs, it's just boost. So it's actually a really nice way to add that little bit of movement and squelch without scooping the mids out of a sound too much. Um, so yeah, good little trick that one. Um, in the earlier parts of the track, there's actually a sort of granular, grainy version of the Reese, uh, which is this one here. We originally had those sounds being played by the main Reese part um, with just some bottom end rolled off. And it kind of just wasn't interesting enough. It worked and, you know, the idea worked really well. But you could tell that it was just the same sound as the other bit. And it was just a bit bland, a bit boring. So we had the idea to uh, to take the the sound. So we resampled it. So we took it. Yeah, we resampled it by just freezing and flattening. So if we go into the project here, uh, current project, and it's this one. So I just took one note on a C just to make things easy with tuning um, and made sure we had quite a bit of the tell because quite a lot of the character in that sound is actually in the release, you know, where the distortion sort of eases off a little bit and you get all those sort of squelches and crackles. Um, and then dropped that into Granulator, which is one of the free Max for Live devices. Uh, and just played the little riff that we'd already come up with. Uh, but automated the sample start or the sort of window uh, on here. Uh, what, what do they call it? File position. Uh, and sort of moved that backwards and forwards. Just automated it, recorded it with the, with the mouse. Uh, and you get this cool effect because you can, you can go backwards as well as forwards. Which means that you can kind of like fade in from the tail. Which sounds really nice. So all those, instead of all those crackles being at the end of the note, you can put them at the beginning of the note. So I'll just play you a bit further on. And you can see what all the automation on here is doing. So we're automating the file position here, which is whereabouts in the file it's playing. And then also the grain. 
uh, the grain size, which is how big the little slices that it makes are. So you can kind of control those. Well. When it goes really high, it actually sounds like it changes the pitch a little bit as well, which is quite a cool effect. And then there's a few higher notes later on. So it just gave that resound that we were already using, like a real bit of extra character and extra bit of vibe for the um, for the secondary part. And then there's a few effects on there. Uh, thermal again for a bit of distortion. Just an auto filter for bringing it in and out. Um, a high pass using EQ8 just to take the bottom end out because obviously that part plays over our main groove so we don't want any low end in there messing with the kick and bass. And a little bit of delay from Echo Boy. Um, so yeah, that's that one. And the thing that I missed before actually was this Labs pad, which is quite simple. Uh, it's just a simple two note interval. Um, as you can see, just playing like a held super simple chord um, from the Spitfire Audio Labs um, textural pads. They're really good, the Spitfire Labs things, actually. If anyone, um, yeah, if you want some interesting sounds, check them out because they're from the guys who make all the sort of uh, really high end orchestral libraries. But they're free. They're kind of like their free sort of hobby project, side gig kind of thing. Uh, and there's some really cool stuff in there. Uh, so I'll play a little section of that. It's pretty simple. So it's just a tension element, really. Uh, it doesn't do anything. The expression just basically makes it a bit louder, brings the filters in slightly. Um, but rather than just, it does the same job as the sort of classic high string, really. Uh, but obviously it has a bit more vibe to it, a bit more, um, you know, a bit more mood. Uh, so that's that. Um, so I'm going to move back up now to the, uh, to the vocal. Uh, just open this folder up here, this group. And yeah, the vocal was performed by a really talented singer called Saskia, who's a friend of a friend. Um, I was introduced to her via, um, yeah, just some, some people I've known in the industry for quite a long time. Um, and we were actually working together on a vocal session for another project completely outside of Spectre. Um, but Rich and I had this uh, instrumental of Endless Days lying around and we knew we needed a little top line for it. So uh, yeah, Saskia and I worked on that um, at the end of this other session and it literally came up you know, came together in about five minutes, really, because yeah, it was a it was a first take, really. The first first couple of takes she did was spot on. So, the production on the vocal is fairly simple. Um, there's a lead, two double tracks, two backing vocals, uh, fairly straightforward. Just wanted that nice, thick, sort of soulful, slightly R and B sound. I live to We didn't actually get the harmonies. I'd forgotten, actually. We didn't actually get the harmonies done um, in the session, so I actually just sort of did those artificially by uh, by just pitching pitching the uh, some copies up, uh, which works fine in this sort of context. I probably wouldn't want to do that on a whole song, but on a one-liner like that, it works works fine. And all together, they sound like this. I'll lift you up. Um, and yeah, processing-wise. Just a bit of simple EQ on the way in because it was it was recorded quite nicely, so we didn't need to mess with it too much in terms of corrective EQ and things. No tuning, um, so a bit of compression, BX Opto. It's just a nice transparent Opto style compressor, and I think that's pretty much the same on every one of the individual channels. Uh, then the vocal group, we've got the Acme Opticon, which is adding a bit of vibey compression, you know, giving it a little bit of drive and a little bit of uh, hammer. The um, the black box. H, what's it called? HG2? Um, yeah, HG2 MS, yeah, it's the, the mastering version of it, which again is just adding a bit of drive and crunch. Uh, simple bit of EQ, thinned it out a little bit more because once we had it, had it in the mix, there was a bit too much mid range presence because it's quite a busy mix already. Uh, and then, yeah, just a little scoop, a little boost there. Um, I'll play you with and without those just so you can hear what they're doing. I'll lift you up. I'll lift you up. So just sort of incrementally added a little bit more crunch and a little bit more uh, a little bit more presence. Um, 
because it's a busy mix. That vocal needs to punch through quite a lot of other stuff going on and it's only for a split second. So we could get away with processing the vocal quite hard um, in terms of drive and compression. Uh, then 2C Breeze on there as a reverb, uh, just on like a sort of uh, big sort of medium hall kind of setting. And that just gives it a nice bit of space. I'll lift you up. I'll lift you up. Uh, we've got a little bit of one beat delay on there, just on a sand as well. Just to give it that nice, nice tail that loops off into the track. Um, moving down, there's a few other little bits of vocal in there. So there's a reverse reverb here, preverb as we've called it, uh, which is just the main part of the vocal, or possibly the whole lot grouped together. Flipped round, reverbed, and then flipped back round again. And that just gives you that nice swoopy um, reverse reverb effect that brings the vocal in in a nice way. Also used it back here without the vocal, so you can just use it as an effect too. And then the final one is this Vox Repeat Saskia, which is, we just bounced the whole lot out uh, and just repeated the, the word up basically to, get, to work as a little build up and filtered it in. So yeah, that works. Sometimes it works on its own. Sometimes it's uh, actually building up to the vocal. In, uh, in those instances, like here, we cut the last little bit off to make space for the vocal. Um, and yeah, that's it for the vocal, I think. Um, so the one final element, um, which is in, which serves, it plays a bigger role in the breakbeat mix, actually, if you haven't listened to that uh, as well, uh, is this Digbeth Diva here. Um, I think the name came from a track that we used as a sort of very loose reference at some point early on in the production process, um, but the name stuck, uh, which is this element here. Uh, which comes in sort of in the second break and then rolls through all the way through the outro of the track or for, through the sort of post-break section of the track at least. Um, and the sound itself is kind of a little bit trancey, a little bit, you know, kind of uh, electronic with a bit of white noise and stuff to it. Um, it would have been programmed from scratch in Diva, I think. Yeah, we used one of the um, one of Diva's init patches, but the sort of uh, the mini mono, which is the mini Moog um, sort of template. And, and it's, yeah, pretty simple sound. One oscillator. Um, one oscillator, bit of noise, super simple really. Um, and I don't think even any stack, we quite often use the voice stacking feature in Diva, but not on this one because we wanted to keep it quite simple and uh, simple and stripped back. Uh, so yeah, the sound itself is pretty simple, but the programming is a little bit more unusual because this track, although we make techno and it's a techno tune, it isn't that techno -y really, you know, like the vocals really soulful, the piano is, you know, I guess more housey really than, um, than sort of a typical techno tune. Um, and this sound, you know, this sound itself is a little bit sort of floaty, bordering on trancey or melodic, I guess. Um, but what we did want to do is give it that sort of slightly hypnotic effect that you get from using weird loop lengths uh, that we usually use a harder sound for, but it worked really well on this. Um, so as you can see, it's, um, if we look at this part here, it loops over, let's have a look. It's an unusual length. Isn't it? <laughs> So yeah, it's one bar and three beats. So it's seven beats long. So you can see that that's, uh, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven beats and then it loops. Which obviously means that it loops out of time or out of synchronization with the rest of the track. You know, the um, everything else is in fours and fours, eights and sixteens. Whereas this is in sevens. So you get this cool thing that it does repeat and you kind of, your brain hooks onto it, but it's sort of the way it lines up to the bars drifts around uh, as it plays. So yeah, each time it gets back to the start of a new uh, a new phrase in the track, it's it kind of lands a little bit differently and starts a little bit differently, which gives a nice bit of interest and makes it feel a bit less linear and a bit less loop based. Um, 
And I think that's pretty much everything. It's not a hugely complicated track. Um, there's not tons and tons of layers in there or tons of effects. Uh, we tried to keep, you know, focus on the main elements being really good rather than trying to overdress it with too many superfluous details so yeah that is our track endless days i hope you enjoyed that walkthrough uh if you've got any questions like hit us up in the uh, in the comments uh, we'll try our best to answer it might not be on it 24 7 but um yeah if you ask any questions we'll try our best to uh, to answer those so yeah thank you for watching and uh, the track is out to stream and by now okay guys thanks for joining us for our production walkthrough of endless days the track is out now to buy and stream and we hope you enjoy it Yep, thanks for watching, guys, and I uh, hope you enjoy the track.